Hey, what's up everybody? It's MC Stein. I want to say thank you for watching this video. I hope it's informative. Today, I want to talk about publishing and masters for recording artists for, and for songwriters. Uh, we've seen, I've seen a lot of this uh, in social media recently, you know, talks about Artists like Chris Brown or uh, 21 Savage talking about how they own their masters. And I've seen a lot in the comments about uh, people not really understanding what that, what that means. Uh, I think we've all seen a lot of uh, documentaries specifically about like TLC, uh, the female R&B group that basically said while they're accepting their Grammys that they were completely broke based off their deals. Okay, so that's that's directly tied to the fact that they don't own uh, their masters or their publishing. So, a master, a master is the sound recording um, that you hear. Okay, an MP3, vinyl, uh, you know, an LP, CDs, YouTube videos, those those songs that are recorded. Okay, the song that you submit to a distributor to put on iTunes, Spotify, for example. That is the master. We'll get into we'll get into more about what that means. On the other hand, you have what's called publishing. And the publishing it relates to the underlying musical composition of the master. Now, this includes notes, melodies, chords, rhythm, lyrics within a piece of music. Okay? So, if for example, you write your own song, uh record it and release it to the public. So, I for example, I produce my own instrumentals, I write my own lyrics, and I distribute I distribute my own music through um the internet, okay? So I own all of that. Okay, I own the master because I recorded it and I own the recording, but also I own the content, the publishing. Okay, so if you publish a book, you own those words. You own the letters that, that, that make up that story or that, that article. Okay, so if you write your own song, if you record it and release it to the public, then you will be both the owner of the master and the publishing uh, related material, which of course are two streams, no pun intended, of royalties. You get you get royalties from from owning the master, and you get publishing, or you get royalties from owning the publishing. When Twenty One Savage or Chris Brown recently in 2019 said, "Hey, I own my masters," every time that song's played, they get the royalties. Okay, not their label. TLC got got messed up because they were given a small percentage of the royalties and the label owned their masters and the publishing. So even though most of the general population uh, these days listens, listens to you know free music, every time you play a Spotify track or a YouTube video, um, you're, you're generating a royalty for that, that person's music. For the master and for the publishing rights. Okay, so a distributor collects royalties directly through um, the stores or the streaming platforms on behalf of the labels. You might have heard um, about uh, BMI or ASCAP or Canadian CSAC. SOCAN or SOCAN is Canadian CSAC, BMI, ASCAP, or US. Okay, these are called performing rights organizations, or PROs, as I'll uh, refer to them in short. They're looking out for me, the songwriter, and they're knocking on the door of the performer, and they're saying, hey, you performed this music, you, you sung these lyrics, and they belong to this guy who I'm representing. Every, every person that writes music Every person that composes, if you're a beat maker, if, uh, if you're a, a songwriter, you need to be associated with a PRO, a performance rights organization. Um, 
especially if you're not performing it yourself. If someone else is performing your content, it's absolutely necessary that you sign up for a PRO. Okay, ASCAP and BMI are are equally huge, and there's a, a long list of major artists that are a part of both of those groups. So it's really kind of a coin toss. I'm personally uh, signed up, registered with ASCAP. So a performance royalty is earned anytime your song is publicly performed, and I publicly performed is kind of a loose is kind of a loose topic or definition, and uh, it basically means anytime your song. Okay, we're talking about songwriters. We're talking about people who make the music, who write the music and the lyrics. Anytime your song is played in public. Okay, so. This includes TV shows, commercials, on the radio, uh, whether it's the radio in your car or Pandora or Sirius XM, even in Starbucks or an elevator or a restaurant. Basically, it basically means that anytime that your song is played in public, okay, so this includes TV shows, commercials. Um, etc. Okay, on the radio, whether it's radio in your car or Pandora or Sirius XM, even Starbucks. Um, the reason that this definition publicly performed is is gray is because if a song, if I write a song and it's publicly performed, let's say by Taylor Swift or Drake. Right, he at his concert or she at her concert performs my song. Technically, I am going to receive royalties because they publicly perform it. Now, there's also other forms of, of public performance, and that is something like Pandora or Sirius XM. Now, what makes this kind of complicated is that Sirius. Uh, XM Radio, Pandora are what are called non-interactive digital sources, which means that someone is not actually clicking on what song to play. Those are just songs that are played through their system. Okay, you don't really have a choice. The DJ or whoever's playing that as as the host of that show gets to choose. Okay, that's totally different than say Spotify or. Um, or if I go to iTunes, I click on what song I want to play. Okay, so so if some, something comes on Sirius XM or Pandora, it's considered a public performance. So jukeboxes, for example, would be a part of this. In all of this falls under performance royalties. Okay, if you're a songwriter, you're a song maker, lyric writer, ghost writer, uh, and it's performed either publicly, like an artist covers it or if it's played publicly on the radio a jukebox maybe maybe both okay what what brought most of you to this video is probably related to uh, or an interest in uh, making money off streams so let's get to mechanical royalties uh, a mechanical royalty are earned per unit when a song is sold uh, on a mechanically reproduced physical medium. Okay, me me mechanically produced means vinyl, physical CDs. Historically, okay, nowadays this includes digital downloads and uh, internet streaming as well. Okay, the majority of the songwriter money that comes from Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, all other uh, streaming download services are called mechanical royalties. Okay? This is important. Mechanical royalties are not performance royalties. ASCAP, BMI do not collect mechanical royalties. Okay? You may have heard that, uh, like, it, I think it's 9.1 cents is earned per download or sale on iTunes. But when you, si when you sell a song on iTunes, um, uh, 9.1 cents is owed to the songwriter publisher of that song. Okay, that's a mechanical royalty. Okay, so 
when you want to release a cover song, for example, you have to get a mechanical license and pay the publisher, songwriter, those mechanical royalties from US down, for U.S. downloads because it's not your song, okay? So if you're playing someone else's song, you have to get that cleared with them or you have to pay, they, they get the mechanical royalties because that is their song. And this is kind of similar to um, someone sampling someone else's music. You have to get it cleared, right? Or they can sue you because you're using their content. It's, it's similar. It's similar to that. Okay, so Spotify, Apple Music, Google, Amazon, etc. They pay these mechanical royalties directly to publishers, okay, via collection agencies, not PROs. Okay, so if you want to directly publish your music, then when you make these sales on these pl digital platforms, these digital platforms pay you through your publisher. A publisher, for example, would be DistroKid or TuneCore or CD Baby or Lander or any, any, any publisher that you go through that you have to get onto a platform through. You can't just go through yourself as an artist. Okay, DistroKid and Spotify are moving towards that to where you can upload your songs by invite uh, directly to uh, Spotify. All right, so, but what I just said is, is that these digital platforms, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, Google Music, they pay mechanical royalties to publishers, and then the publishers pay that to uh to the song, the song performers, the songwriters, the song creators, the music creators, not PROs. Okay, streaming services do not pay mechanical royalties to ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, SOCAN, or any other uh, any other PRO. Now, in order to collect, in order to receive these royalties you have to have a publisher okay such as CD Baby Pro Publishing um, there's organizations like Song Trust, Cabalt, TuneCore Publishing, Audium, Centric so these publishers register your information uh, with the Global Mechanical Rights Societies and uh, digital sources so you get paid your mechanical royalties Again, this is for songwriters and publishers. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I'm, I honestly am just investigating this for myself. And I've just seen a lot of questions in social media comments of, 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 of various pages. And I just thought that it'd be helpful and I thought it'd be uh, a little bit more thorough. I know there's a lot of information here. But if you understand these, the, the basics of what I'm talking about, and of course you can go back and watch this again. But if you understand what I'm talking about in this video, you're in a great position to set yourself up for um, handling this right and not being taken advantage of. All right, so please leave a comment. Please subscribe uh, to my page. Uh, you can follow me on uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. I'll leave I'll leave my links in, in the in the in the information section below. But th that's all I got. Check out the next check out the next video that compares CD Baby, TuneCore, and DistroKid, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.